I'm the minister, uh, Reverend Andrea Allen at Westminster United Church, and today is a joint service with the folks of First United and Westminster. Um, and so we're excited to continue um, <clears throat> to join in worship together, supporting one another. Uh, you folks led the first two weeks of July, and uh, we're going to lead the joint services of today and next Sunday. Um, so it's always great to have a reason to get together and to pick each other's brains um, and to just share in the worship of uh, Jesus Christ, of God, the creator of the Holy Spirit. So if you haven't already, I would invite you to mute yourselves uh, if you're here on Zoom. And I should say welcome to those who are on Zoom as well. Uh, we've been chatting a little bit already uh, before we went live on those other mediums. And for those who are joining us on YouTube with Westminster later on after we record it and put it up, welcome to you as well. There are many ways we are trying to figure out how to um, work smarter and allow more access um, while we continue to live in the life of social uh, or rather physical distancing. So at Westminster, we begin our service, as I know you at first do, with an acknowledgement of the Indigenous lands. And so uh, <clears throat> we will begin with the one that we use at Westminster. Long before those of us who are settlers and those of us who are descendants of settlers and those who were brought by settlers came to this land, there were people that here. Many nations of people lived and live on the land that we call Canada. Given responsibility by the creator to be stewards of this land and all that lives on it. We know these people as First Nations. Today, as we remember what it means to live relationally, let us give thanks to the First Nations of this land wherever we might be right now. And let us remember that at Westminster and at First United, we worship God on the historic and unceded territory of the Neutral, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee of Six Nations. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation. So friends, I've already uh, spent a few moments uh, welcoming you into however you are joining us today or in the future. Um, but I just want to highlight a few announcements. And I know Greg Case from FIRST has an, a couple announcements that he'd like to share for you all. Um, just I wanted to let you know that um, over the last couple of months, the folks at Westminster, a, a number of us have been meeting through Zoom calls to do a little bit of unpacking of racism within our Canadian context, within our own lives and uh, where we are. Um, we watch a video that we can all access on uh, the internet, and then we meet for an hour over Zoom to discuss that. So our next one will be taking place this Thursday. We'll be meeting at noon, Eastern uh, Daylight Savings Time. If you would like to join this, it, there's no reason why you have to have joined the previous couple to, to join this one. Um, get in touch with me um, because it is a different Zoom room than the one we're currently in um, and to get some information on the video. Um, so all are welcome into that conversation. Um, it's not always an easy conversation, but it is a life-giving conversation. Um, so Greg, um, would you like to share some of the announcements from First United? Sure. Uh, sure. Thank you, Andrea, and, and thank you, Westminster. It's uh, great that we can worship together this morning, and uh, it's, it is greatly appreciated. Um, at first, we were sad to hear that Irma Cadella, a longtime member of First United Congregation, died this past Thursday. Uh, she was a strong supporter of First, uh, especially our outreach program, and what was an active participant most recently in our in our caring communities uh, program? Uh, the obituary and service details 
will be made available on Tuesday on the Herb and Good website, and we will also post them on the First United website. So our prayers are with her, her husband, Stan, and with the rest of her family. And that's what we have from First. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Are there any other announcements uh, that need to be shared right now that uh, we haven't yet already? Um, if you do need to share one, just know that I can't see you. Oh, sorry, this is, I suppose, only for the folks on Zoom. Um, just know that I can't see you. So if you do have something, just uh, unmute yourself to speak. <clears throat> All right, folks, um, I would invite you as we enter into this time of worship. Today is um, a day where, uh, well, actually yesterday was the day. Um, August 1st is e actually known in Ontario as Emancipation Day. Um, this is uh, the day that is recognized as um, the emancipation of the slaves in all of the British colonies of which Canada at the time in 1834 was uh, one of. And so to recognize this day, today, August 2nd, we are centering our worship around Emancipation Day. Um, so uh, with that in mind, with the, the work that we need to do with the the ways in which we need to hear God's call to us, I would invite you to make sure you're muted and join with me in More Voices number 79, Spirit Open My Heart, and we will sing verse 3. Aren't we singing verses 1 and 3? Okay. Um, I can't hear her now. Well, she's the one speaking. Okay. Yeah, that's what we have on the screen. So go ahead, Jen. Sorry. Yes. Verses one and three. Sorry, I was okay. muted. All right. As the spirit blows into our midst, fanning into life the spark of hope in our souls, may the light of this candle and the candles you may be lighting wherever you are remind us of the fire that warms our hearts, the love that we are called to share, and the light that always guides our way. 
Friends, I would invite you to join with me in our opening call to worship, which is responsive. And a thank you to uh, Janice Greenhalgh, who will be reading the all part. You're, you're all invited to share in the all part, uh, but so that you have someone to follow, Janice Greenhalgh will be uh, reading that part for us. The Lord our God is great. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Come, let us remember the great things God has done for us. Do not let us neglect to teach our children the greatness of God. Let us not forget our past and those who have gone before us. We remember our ancestors and our history, and we name our future. Let us lift our voices in song, lift our arms in praise, and open our hearts in gratitude. Let us greet God with our hymn of praise. And with that, let us pray. O holy creator, giver of all life, lover of all humanity and all of creation, we pray for you, to you today for change. Jesus, you revealed God through your wise words, and your loving deeds. And we encounter you still today in the faces of those whom our society has pushed to the margins. Guide us through the love you have revealed to establish the justice you proclaimed that all peoples might dwell in harmony and peace united by that one love that binds us to each other and to you. And most of all, God, change our routine worship and work into genuine encounter with you and our better selves so that our lives will be changed for the good of all. As Jesus showed us your mothering love, O oh God, we pray in the words he taught his friends as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For today's Emancipation Day worship, we have two scripture readings. Um, one from the book of Galatians and one from the book of Revelations. And we are pleased to have a member of First United Church, John Lindsay, to share this scripture reading for us all. Thank you, Andrea. Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Before faith came, we were under the constraint of the law, locked in until the faith that was coming would be revealed. In other words, the law was our monitor until Christ came to bring about our justification through faith. But now that faith is here, we are no longer in the monitor's charge. Each one of you is a child of God because of your faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who have been baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. In Christ, there is no Jew or Greek, slave or citizen, male or female. All are one in Christ Jesus. Furthermore, if you belong to Christ, you are the offspring of Abraham, which means you inherit all that was promised. 
and from Revelation. After that, I saw before me an immense crowd without number from every nation, tribe, people, and language. They stood in front of the throne and the lamb dressed in long white robes and holding palm branches. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation is of our God who sits on the throne and of the lamb. All the angels who were encircling the throne as well as the elders and the four living creatures prostrated themselves before the throne. They worshiped God with these words, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to you, O God, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These people in white robes, who are they and where do they come from? I answered, You are the one who knows. Then the elder said to me, These are the ones who survived the great period of testing. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. That's why they stand before God's throne and the one they serve day and night in the temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them forever. Never again will they be hungry or thirsty. The sun in its scorching heat will never beat down on them. For the Lamb who has is at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe every last tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. There is a very new, probably just over a week old um, website that has come up in response to August 1st as Emancipation Day. And it is called uh, unitedagainstracism.ca. The moderator of our United Church um, begins, is the opening face of this website. And it begins with a video um, of a statement on uh, from our moderator, the Right Reverend, uh, the Right Reverend uh, Richard Bott. And so Paul, our Zoom host, has downloaded this video and will share it for all of us uh, right now. I don't think there's Paul, any sound. Paul, I don't Paul. have any audio. Proclaim so. Jesus crucified and risen, our judge. Oh, sorry, I will <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Bott. I'm moderator of the United Church of Canada. In the United Church, we have an affirmation of faith, part of which states, we are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. As we've continued to learn what it means to be people who seek justice and resist evil, we've come to understand how deeply racism is embedded in our lives as individual Christians, as communities of faith, and as a denomination. And just as importantly, we've come to understand how vitally we need to do the work of becoming people who are anti-racist. This isn't something that you just check off a box and say, we're done. It's a process of learning and turning around of repenting and becoming new. It's long work and work that needs to be done. Over the last few decades, as we as a denomination have walked with the indigenous people of this land, one of the things that we have learned is how important it is to understand the truth of the stories that are being told. One of the stories that we in Canada 
haven't often heard is the story of slavery. An important moment is coming up in that story. On the 28th of August, 1833, an act to abolish slavery received royal assent in the British Parliament. That act affected almost all of the companies of the British Empire. And it did change things here, what was British North America. On the 1st of August, 1834, slavery was abolished. But for slavery to have been abolished, we need to remember slavery existed right here. As people who are seeking justice, resisting evil, as people who are working to become anti-racist. It's important for us to commemorate and celebrate that day. And part of the way we do that is by learning more, not just about our past, but about who we are now and who we can become. Good peace and peace to you. This website, <clears throat> unitedagainstracism.ca, is filled with um, blog posts, one page posts from members of the United Church of Canada, prominent members of uh, the Christian um, research faith um, across the world, um, and experts of their own lived history as well as experts of Canadian history and it's been a, a very illuminating time reading through each of these posts learning a bit more about my own country. You see for most of my life almost all of my life I thought that the only thing Canada had to do with enslavement was to be the saviors at the end of the Underground Railway, saving escaped slaves from the clutches of the evil American slave owners. This is what I was taught in grade school, and none of my 24 years in formal education told me anything different. In actuality, this fact of Canadian saviors was reinforced many times over throughout my education. It is only because of this growing grassroots movement to designate August 1st federally of every year as Emancipation Day and the website United Against Racism, as well as the website for the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, humanrights.ca, that I have had the push to educate myself on Canada's true history with the enslavement of Black and Indigenous people. I know that the education our youth are now receiving has more truth than I ever learned, but as I heard earlier this week, when history shows the powerful as the heroes, we must be questioning the truth of that history. August 1st in Ontario is called Emancipation Day, and it has been since 2008 though most of us either didn't know that or have forgotten. On March 25th, 1807, the enslavement trade was abolished throughout the British Empire of which British North America, now known as Canada, was a part of, making it illegal to buy or sell human beings and ending much of the transatlantic trade. Enslavement itself was abolished everywhere in the British Empire in 1834, almost 30 years later, though it was abolished sooner in a number of different areas. Enslavement in the United States didn't end until 1865, 31 years later after the British Empire. And this, of course, as we all have learned, is why Canada became a safe haven for escaped enslaved people in the United States. The story of the Underground Railroad is a very positive moment in Canadian history, very worthy of commemoration. 
but it is not worthy of this at the expense of the truth of our history with enslavement. For more than 200 years, slavery happened here as well. Now, Ontario renamed August 1st as Emancipation Day in 2008 to help bring recognition to this. And as of this year, 2020, Vancouver officially named August 1st as Emancipation Day. So now the hope is that we can urge the government to make this a federally recognized day. Nova Scotia Senator Wanda Thomas Bernard had introduced a member's bill in the Senate two years ago in 2018 to recognize August 1st as the day slavery was abolished in the British Empire as Emancipation Day, but it was, as often happens, completely dropped. Now, Majid Jahari, a member of Parliament for Richmond Hill, Ontario, has brought the same motion forward again because of the grassroots movement of Black Lives Matter, of the way we are finally, as white people in Canada, listening and hearing what we are being told. Majid Jahari has introduced this motion in the House of Commons, calling for Emancipation Day to be recognized all across the country. And Senator Wanda Thomas Bernard has said that she expects this motion will come before MPs this fall. Our own moderator, who have we, we have just seen speak, has also sent a formal letter of support for this action to the Prime Minister, a letter that you can access from the United Church website, united-church.ca. United now, in the CBC News report on this motion being brought forth, Senator Wanda Thomas Bernard urges us to remember that Emancipation Day wasn't just a day of celebration 186 years ago. It was a call to action and one that must continue today as Black people continue to face racism and violence, as she says. She reminds us that the current day anti-Black racism that we are seeing the racial profiling, the history of marginalization, this is really rooted in the history of slavery in Canada and beyond. To remember our true history is to bring about the work of change. In not telling the truth of enslavement in Canada, we are erasing the existence of those who were enslaved and we stop the progress of justice for those who continue to this day to live with the scars of the history. And with the truth of this history, we must learn that even in the ways that the enslaved people were freed, there was gross injustice that lives on today. In British North America, Canada now, if Black enslaved people were freed, they often had to still work as indentured servants for several years to buy their freedom. On Prince Edward Island in 1796, an enslaved man named Dimbo Suckles was freed, but only on the condition that he work for his former master as an indentured servant for seven more years. The historian Jim Hornby notes that such indentured servitude contracts were the then standard rate for their freedom. When we learn our history, we must be willing to hear all parts and refrain from the urge to make ourselves feel good for the times when justice was carried out. Reverend Dr. Paul Walfall, who is the originator of this website, unitedagainstracism.ca, on speaking about making August 1st Emancipation Day, shares that the celebration of the ending of slavery is neither to make persons feel guilty, nor is it a premise to bludgeon persons about racism. For me, he writes, it is an opportunity to humbly acknowledge our history and to resolve to make a different and better tomorrow. In 
In the letter to the Galatians we listened to earlier, Paul writes that in Christ there is no Jew or Greek, slave or citizen, male or female. All are one in Christ Jesus. And while the slavery Paul is referring to in ancient Greece was more often a servitude than what we think of, the sentiment is still very clear, if not more poignant, for the enslavement of Black and Indigenous peoples. Each and every person it, each and every person who is, who will be, or whoever has been, is a beloved and cherished child of God, simply for being alive. All of us today in Zoom, on YouTube, on Facebook, and later uh, through YouTube, are beloved children of God exactly as we are. Christ has always stood with those who are oppressed. And so for those who are still today oppressed by the history of slavery in Canada, Christ firmly stands for recognition, for justice, and for true equality. As the saying goes, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Or as our moderator, the Right Reverend Richard Bott put it on his Facebook page earlier this week, when we don't know our history, we're just doomed. The stories that we tell about ourselves are part of the fabric of our identity. In many ways, humankind is as much the product of our stories as we are flesh and bone and blood. Those stories shape and are in return shaped by our values, which is why truth telling is so important, which is why knowing our history and being honest about it, it the exciting parts and the painful parts is vital because it isn't simply something that happened a long time ago. Our history, whether remembered or forgotten, shapes us all in the now. In our reading from the book of Revelation, there is an immense crowd without number from every nation, tribe, people, and language. There is a great cloud of witness. These clouds of witness have been telling us, white Canadians, about the true history of slavery in Canada for hundreds of years. There is a great cloud of witness who have been telling us about the racism, individual and systemic, that has been happening in our country each and every day. Today, we have the opportunity to join in the great cloud of witness of the immense crowd without number from every nation, tribe, people, and language to join to tell our federal government that symbols matter and renaming August 1st as Emancipation Day pushes all of us to learn and to remember the truth of the history of enslavement in Canada. It is just one way in which we can continue the work of becoming anti-racist as our moderator urged us earlier in the video. A friend and colleague of mine, Reverend Adam Kilner, who serves the United Church in Sarnia, wrote about August 1st as a black man. On this day, August 1st in 1834, slavery in the British Empire, including Canada, came to an end. The first slave of record, Olivier Lejeune, arrived in New France, modern day Quebec, in 1629 at the age of six years old. Slavery ending in 1834 means that the transatlantic slave trade lasted for 205 years in Canada. This is a significant day for people of African descent in Canada. It was the starting point for creating a more equal Canada. The work is not yet complete even 186 years later, but we continue to hunger for the kind of nation our ancestors were fully committed to participating in. The words of Christ are clear, that all 
our beloved, and that all are one in Christ and all deserve to be free. Freedom means knowing about our past and promising to do better. This is the work we have all been doing. It is a very long and difficult process. But as we are reminded in the book of Revelation, there's a great cloud of witness that walks alongside us, that we are one in Christ. Christ is within all of us, guiding us and leading us on this work, forgiving us when we misstep or get tired, but helping us to continue this journey. Today is the day after Emancipation Day in Ontario. And so let us work together alongside our moderator and the many people who are calling for another small act of justice in making August 1st federally Emancipation Day so that we all as Canadians can learn our true history and not to the whitewashed history that we learned within our own school systems. Thanks be to God for the great cloud of witness, for the ways in which God leads us, moves us, and helps us to continue to learn and grow. Amen. I would invite you to settle yourself wherever you are seated now to breathe in deep and to release, to feel the support of all who are gathered in Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, 
from the great cloud of witness from now into eternity. Let us join our hearts and souls together in prayer, for we are called to be a praying people. O holy and righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and sin and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us, to resist the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form and in any matter of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. We pray for the ways in which slavery continues to severely impact Black people. And we especially pray for those who live in modern day slavery, for human trafficking victims, we pray for those who fight human trafficking. We pray for strength and courage. We have seen in our time of pandemic that people of color and the poor have borne the brunt of the crisis. Much higher rates of virus infection as well as greater economic devastation. Guide us in changing what is wrong and protect our siblings of all colors and creeds. God, as we come to you today as two congregations of your church, we lift up in prayer all of us and all of those among us who are grieving for the most recent death among us, for Irma Cadella, we lift up in prayer her family. We pray for Stan and her children, all who knew and loved her. God, God, for the congregation of Westminster, we continue to pray for the family and friends of our lost Lynn McCauley, and we lift in prayer the family and friends of Karen Dinsmore. Be with all who continue to grieve their loss. God among us, we know that there are many folks who are living with many illnesses, not just COVID. We lift up in prayer the people we hold within our own hearts and souls. We lift up in prayer, Mike, grant strength and courage to all who are suffering and to all who are supporting those. We pray that you might continue to be with nurses and doctors, with all medical support staff who continue to work to help all who are ill and hurting. We continue to pray for our essential workers, for those who are in retail, for those who do not have a choice to stay at home to provide for all of us. With the announcement of school this past week, we also pray for our educators. We pray that you might guide them as well as the administrators who are putting forth the rules and regulations. We pray for the parents and the guardians of the children who are trying to make decisions about the best physical and mental health for their children. We pray for the children, for those who are afraid, for those who just want to go back to normal. 
words that we all understand. And in the silence, God, we lift up the many prayers we hold within our hearts and souls, knowing that even if we do not have words for them, you know our prayer. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love. Send us power. Send us grace. Amen. As Emancipation Day is only a growing movement, there are not a lot of liturgy resources. However, in the United States, Juneteenth is <clears throat> something that has been celebrated for quite a while. And so there are quite a number of resources uh, for Juneteenth for the emancipation of uh, enslaved people in the United States. And so um, I have adapted for our context, this Emancipation Day litany that was first created for um, Emancipation Day for um, the African American Heritage Hymnal. It is responsive, and again, Janice will be reading the all, and you're all invited to share in the all part, wherever you might be. Believing that when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. That when one part of the body rejoices, we all rejoice and that in Christ we are all one body. O oh Lord, we celebrate your strong hand of deliverance. We have seen your grace in the midst of life's burdens. Lord God of hosts, on the anniversary of freedom from slavery, we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. August 1st, 1834, Slavery was finally and fully outlawed throughout the British Empire and thus here in Canada, Emancipation Day. But emancipation is only the first step in a long journey toward true freedom. Lord God of hosts, be with us always as you were with Viola Desmond. Our hopes soar to the new heights of joy when we remember the emancipation of Nelson Mandela in 1990 and his ascendancy to president of South Africa after 26 long years in prison. Blessed are the righteous. Lord God of hosts, be with us always, as you were with Desmond Tutu. Let us leave behind those sins that pulled us down in the old year and answer the high calling of your will for our lives in the new year. Lord God of hosts, on the anniversary of our freedom from slavery, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Together, let us sing of Voices United 678 for the healing of the nations, and we'll only sing verses one and two.
at uh, Westminster United Church following our Zoom uh, time of worship, all are uh, within the Zoom world are invited to join us to remain if you would like for a time of coffee hour. You supply your own coffee or your own snacks, but we all supply the conversation and the community building and the time to be together, which are few and far between these days. So friends, on this Emancipation Day worship, Christ invites us to go out into the world in peace, to have courage, to hold on to what is good, to return no one evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted and to support the weak, to help the suffering, to honor all people to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>